An analysis examining the judicial record of Amy Coney Barrett was released this week, and its findings show the judge's partiality towards large corporations. According to the watchdog, watchdog group Accountable, Barrett sided with large corporations 76% of the time, Sagar. Yeah, so joining us to discuss Barrett's rulings as well as the potential impact for nomination, editor at large for Jacobin, David Sirota. Good to see you, David. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, first of all, David, we should start with this, which is the president's been diagnosed with corona or has been tested positive for coronavirus. The GOP chairwoman has, di uh, has tested positive for coronavirus. Amy Coney Barrett was in close contact with the president and many of his staff not that long ago and has met with dozens of Republican senators on Capitol Hill. I mean, is this going to first of all, you know, we need to know whether she's tested positive. Do you think that this could throw a wrench into the game just in terms of the vote, the, the specific machinations in Congress surrounding this? What's your reaction? Well, the Senate doesn't have remote voting rules. Uh, the House has okay. some of those, but the Senate doesn't have them. So one basic medical question is, can the Senate get together uh, in any kind of safe way? Uh, I mean, I, I think that's a legit question for every senator to ask. Or are we going to have senators dressed up in basically space suits to come in and and try to do hearings or try to vote? I mean, all of that sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it's all entirely possible. I mean, certainly there's the the, the argument that 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 Judge Barrett should uh, be quarantining for 14 days since she was around. Uh, uh, President Trump and the senators who were around her. I mean, that's basic contact tracing. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, are, are the hearings going to be put off at le or the process for at least 14 days? I mean, that's a, a huge question. And, and frankly, it shouldn't be a political question. It should just be a medical question. Right. right. I mean, we've seen uh, congressional hearings conducted by it via Zoom. Um, is that a potential possibility for how they, I mean, obviously Mitch McConnell wants to move this thing forward and do it as quickly as he can. Seems to me like he's likely to find a way. Do you think that that would work out? I, I'm, I'm guessing that's what they're going to try to do, at least with, with the hearings. But I think there's an argument to be made that among the Democratic senators who may have wanted to meet with her or, con or confer with her, that that's not necessarily acceptable. Uh, and I think we are really in uncharted territory here. And, and I would also say that wh whereas a routine set of, of hearings can happen, uh, you know, not in person, and, uh, and that's not necessarily a big deal, th this would be a, a next step to actually put somebody on the Supreme Court forever uh, for their for a lifetime appointment uh, without going through the most basic process of in-person hearings and 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 back and forth like that that has been done for the entire history of the country I, you know I, I think that, that that's a pretty big step into into something uncharted yeah I mean so David let's talk about what we you know the original piece just about ACB, her relationship to corporations. What is this watchdog group finding? What have you found um, through your analysis? Well, I, basically, the Republicans have a strategy now, at least for the last 15 years, on ju judicial nominations uh, to the Supreme Court, which is that they rely on the public debate being about high profile social issues uh, like abortion. Uh, like civil rights, civil liberties, and the like. And, and they rely on, on that being the centerpiece of the debate and not economic issues. Uh, they rely on being able to motivate uh, a religious base in support of uh, judicial uh, picks who are maybe conservative on those social issues, but who are uh, very, very corporate friendly in a way that a, a conservative working class base might not actually support on economic issues. And, and Amy Barrett uh, exemplifies that, uh, you know, the rulings that she has, has put out there when it comes to business cases, uh, she has sided with corporations and business interests over workers over and over and over again. Uh, that's what that analysis that you mentioned uh, showed, that in, in so many cases she has sided with big business. And here's the thing, that's much of, if not most of, what the Supreme Court actually deals with. That if you look at the press and you, you listen to what, what, what ha the debate over a nominee, you'd think the Supreme Court only deals with abortion and civil rights and civil liberties. You right. might not think that most of their cases happen to deal with the relationship uh, with corporate power vis-a-vis -vis workers and whether corporations should have more power over workers. And when you look at it that way, the Supreme Court has become a rubber stamp for corporations. Amy Barrett's record is one of being a rubber stamp for corporations. 
things. And that's really why all that money, millions and millions of dollars from places like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the Coke Network, that's why that money is flooding in behind her, her nomination. And it's, it seems to me this is sort of emblematic of a broader strategy and trend within the Republican Party, because there are a lot of Americans who would fall into the category of being basically socially conservative and economically somewhat, you know, center left or left. And yet that view is not like represented anywhere. It's not represented on the courts. There's not a single legislator who I could really say, you know, fits in that category either. And the Democrats have their own version of this, of using sort of social issues to cover a, a, up what is a fundamentally corporate agenda. But just speak to that kind of that shell game and that lack of representation. A hundred percent. I mean, look, this is the thing that Thomas Frank identified in his book, What's the Matter with Kansas, that basically the, the, the thesis of that book is, is essentially that Republican elites, corporate elites, uh, use social issues uh, to motivate a working class, culturally conservative base in support of policies, politicians and nominees uh, who may be socially conservative, but who are really being uh, moving forward in the political system because they represent corporate interests. They are e have an economically corporate agenda, which is not what necessarily working class conservative uh, voters necessarily have. Uh, so that's what, the, that, to me, that's what this nomination really uh, exemplifies. It is that what's the matter with Kansas dynamic uh, to a T. And, and again, it's a deliberate strategy. I mean, I mean Amy Barrett, I mean, weeks before she was nominated, she issued a ruling. This is just one of many examples. She issued a ruling uh, essentially making it harder for workers to, to, to under existing law to get access to overtime pay uh, from major employers. Uh, so this is a, a judge who, again, that money, all the millions of dollars behind her nomination, that's not flooding in there because she's anti-abortion or because she's uh, issuing rulings on, on, on social issues that are conservative. That money is motivated to make more money for corporations. That money is there to create a six to three majority on the court in support of the corporate agenda. Yeah, you're speaking my language, David. Try to call it out here every day. Appreciate you joining us, man. Thank Great you. Great to see you, David. Be well. Thank you. All right, so you now, even if Trump remains asymptomatic, it is unclear how long he's going to have to withdraw from the campaign trail and he's going to have to isolate. So Team Rising, they're going to discuss that issue. That's when Rising continues.